Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Monday, October the 5th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Our New Testament reading this evening is from Matthew chapter 8. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this that even the winds and sea obey him? And when he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men met him, coming out of the tombs, so fierce that no one could pass that way. And behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs. And behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Our Book of Concord reading tonight is from Articles 7 and 8 on the Church. We'll be finishing those articles tonight. And tomorrow evening we will begin uh, Articles 9 and 10 on, the baptiz on Baptism in the Lord's Supper. Talking about justification. If these things were handed down as necessary for justification, why afterward did the bishops change many things in these very matters? If they were matters of divine right, it was not lawful to change them by human authority. Before the Synod of Nicaea, some observed Easter at one time, and others observed it at another time. Neither did this lack of uniformity harm faith. Afterward, the plan was adopted by which our Passover, Easter, did not fall at the same time as that of the Jewish Passover. The apostles had commanded the churches to observe the Passover with the brethren who had been converted from Judaism. Therefore, after the Synod of Nicaea, certain nations held firmly to the custom of observing the Jewish time. The apostles by this decree did not wish to put a demand upon the churches as the words of the decree testify. 
For it asks no one to be troubled, even though his brothers and sisters in observing Easter do not change the time correctly. The words of the decree are found in Epiphanius. Do not calculate, but separate it. Celebrate it whenever your brethren of the circumcision do. Celebrate it at the same time with them, and even though they may have erred, let this not be a care to you. Epiphanius writes the, these words are the words presented in a decree about Easter. The wise reader can easily conclude from the decree that the apostles wished to free people from the foolish opinion of a fixed time, to help them from being troubled if a mistake should be made in setting the date. However, some in the East who followed the teaching of the audience argued that because of this decree of the apostles, the Passover should be observed with the Jews. In refuting them, Epiphanius praises the decree and said that it contains nothing that departs from the faith or the rule of the church. He blames the audience because they do not correctly understand the expression. Epiphanius interprets it in the sense in which we interpret it because the apostles thought it unimportant what time the Passover should be observed. Nevertheless, for harmony's sake and because prominent brothers and sisters had been converted from the Jews who observed their custom, the adversaries wished the rest to follow their example. They wisely warned the reader neither to remove the freedom of the gospel nor to burden consciences. The apostles thought that consciences should not be troubled even though there should be an error in setting the date. Many things like this can be collected from the historical accounts. In them, it appears that a lack of uniformity in human observances does not harm the unity of faith. What need is there of discussion? The adversaries do not at all understand what the righteousness of faith is, what Christ's kingdom is. That is clear when they judge that uniformity of observances in food, days, clothing, and the like, which do not have God's command, is necessary. Look at these religious men, our adversaries. They require uniform human observances for the unity of the church. They do this even though they themselves have changed Christ's obedience in the use of the supper, which certainly was a universal ordinance before. If universal ordinances are so necessary, why do they themselves change the ordinance ordinance of Christ's Supper, which is not human but divine. We will have to speak about this entire controversy a little later. Article 8 has been approved entirely in which we confess that hypocrites and wicked persons have been mixed in with the Church, and that the sacraments are powerful even though they are given by wicked ministers. Ministers act in Christ's place and do not represent their own persons, according to Luke, the one who hears you hears me, 10.16. Ungodly teachers are to be deserted because they no longer act in Christ's place, but are antichrists. Christ says, Beware of false prophets, Matthew 7.15. Paul says, If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed, Galatians 1.9. Furthermore, Christ has warned us concerning the church in his parables. When offended by the private sins of priests or people, we should not stir up divisions as the Donatists have wickedly done. However, concerning those who have stirred up division because they denied that priests are permitted to hold possessions and property, we hold that they are completely rebellious. To hold property is a civil ordinance. It is lawful, however, for Christians to use civil ordinances just as they use the air, the light, food, and drink. For as this order of the world and fixed movements of the heavenly bodies are truly God's ordinances and are preserved by God, so lawful governments are truly God's ordinances preserved and defended by God against the devil. So ends Article 7 and 8, and we again, tomorrow evening, we'll pick up with baptism and the beginning of the Lord's Supper. Actually, we'll do the entirety of the Lord's Supper. It's a short article. We join together now in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, merciful and holy bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you, give an increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring. Convert the unbelievers. Bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church and the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you, so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels. And be a strong help to all who need you, for the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, Creator and Redeemer, you have power over the demons and over all of creation, so that even the winds and waves obey you. Give us faith to leave everything behind to follow you in the way of suffering, as you feed us along the way with your very body and blood. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.